Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Well, welcome to our service today. It's the 22nd of August and it's an opportunity to reflect on the whole armour of God. That phrase is used by Paul in his letter to the church in Ephesus. That's a wonderful letter. It's a letter written, could have been written for the church today rather than the church some thousand of years ago. It describes human beings, our predicaments and our flaws, but much more it describes God reaching out to people and his promise of recreation and transformation. It speaks about power and identity. It describes the power that God gives us by his spirit for living. It speaks of the giftedness and the connectedness of the human person and it speaks of the body of Christ with Christ as the head of that body. It takes us back to the fundamentals of who we are called to be and how we are called to be. It talks about the growing of the body of Christ, but too it speaks of the things that God has given us to support us on our journey of faith. And Paul describes those things in the context of armour, he uses the phrase, the armour of God. And when he speaks of the armour of God, he's not talking about physical things, but he's talking about spiritual things. In our first hymn today, we hear of some of those things. Be thou my breastplate, my sword for the fight. Be thou my whole armour. Be thou my true might. Be thou my vision. An opportunity to sing or to listen to these wonderful words.
A reading from the book of Ephesians, chapter 6. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armour of God, so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armour of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day, and having done everything, to stand firm. Stand therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, that when I speak a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly, as I must speak. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Shall we pray? Lord, we thank you for your word, which we've just heard. May you speak to us afresh through it this morning. Amen. We've seen over the past few weeks that um, Paul in his letter to the Ephesians has been encouraging them to grow in their faith, to be mature in spiritual matters, united as a body of believers and to live as children of light. In our reading today, Paul ends his letter by encouraging the believers to put on the armour of God so they may, th may withstand the wiles of the enemy. He describes the belt of truth holding everything together the breastplate of righteousness that covers a heart, keeping it pure, the shoes of the gospel of peace, leaving footprints of peace where we walk and taking the peace of Christ wherever we go. He encourages the use of a shield of faith and the sword of the spirit, faith to protect us, the spirit to empower us. In fact, we, d we could do a whole sermon series on the armor of God. But today I want to focus on Paul's command to put on the helmet of salvation. Nowadays we don't really need to think much about helmets, but for the people in Paul's time they would have understood the significance of a helmet. The helmet was recognised as the most important piece of armour, the last line of defence. Even if in battle an arrow or a sword got past your shield, the helmet would stop the danger. The helmet's main job was obviously to protect the head and the head is such an important part of our body. It holds our brain, our eyes, our mouth, our ears and whilst all those parts of the body are vital, in battle if you did receive an injury to your eye or mouth you could maybe survive but the central job of the helmet was to protect your brain, to protect your mind. Our minds are so important, how we think and feel, how we make decisions, what we believe, what we understand, all those decisions are made in our brain. It's such an important part of our body and that's why we need to protect it. Paul describes the helmet in the armour of God as the helmet of salvation. Salvation literally means to be saved, to be rescued or delivered. The Bible tells us how Jesus died on the cross. He took away our sins so that we could be forgiven. He saved us. And when we accept Jesus as our Lord, we can know that we are his and we can live as children of light. In this passage in Ephesians, Paul reminds us to daily put on the armour of God. Now, I don't think it means that we have to daily ask Jesus to save us and to come and be our friend. He doesn't leave at midnight and not return unless we remember to ask him the next day, which is a good job considering my memory. Matthew 28, 20 reminds us, Jesus said, I am with you always. What I think Paul is meaning is that we need to daily put on our helmet of salvation. And when we do, we're daily reminding ourselves of whose we are. It affirms the hope we have in our salvation. Often helmets used in battle had a distinguishing mark somewhere on them to help the soldiers identify who was on their side. 
When we put on our helmet, we're reminding ourselves and those around us who we belong to, whose team we are on. So how can we this week put on our helmets? What can we be doing to protect our heads? How can we in our everyday lives protect our minds and use the helmet of salvation? I've got some ideas and the primary school teacher in me is going to come out so there's going to be some actions to go with it. Firstly, give your head a pat. Your brain, as we've seen, is really important and what we spend time thinking about affects every area of our life. It's easy sometimes, and especially through these past months of pandemic, to have doubts and anxieties and worries about all sorts of things, including our faith. But when we put on the helmet of salvation, we're reminding ourselves who God says we are. As we put on our helmets, we remember that we are children of God, free, accepted and loved. So as you put on the helmet of salvation this week, find ways to remind yourself of what Jesus says about you. It might be learning a Bible verse, a promise of God that you think about and repeat to yourself every day. Maybe you want to spend some time this week digging deeper into the Bible. The issues that you're worrying about, what does the Bible say about them? What does it really mean when Jesus says in Matthew 11:28, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. When we put on our helmet of salvation, we put on hope. We stop being disorientated. We remind ourselves of whose we are. Perhaps this week we need to remember that we are saved, to again commit to living a life for Jesus. And as we put on the helmet of salvation, we remember whose team we are on. Secondly, we're gonna wiggle our ears. As we put on the helmet of salvation, we can use our ears to listen to good things. Maybe this week you might want to listen to some worship music Maybe you want to make your own song or if you're a musical, play an instrument. I've often found that listening to music is a really helpful way that I can connect with God, especially during those times when I don't really know what to say or how to say it. Listening to music helps me. Maybe your ears this week need to listen to a podcast. There's some great resources around and I can encourage you to protect your mind by listening to helpful things. What you listen to affects your mind. If you have an iPhone, you could download the Pray As You Go app. It's got some great podcasts on there and some recorded retreats which you can take part in. Or maybe with a friend you would like to go to pattern.org.uk which has a whole host of podcasts based on the different attributes of Christ from kindness, grace, peace and there's podcasts about prayer, silence, meditations. Have a good look, it's really good. Perhaps this week we need to decide to stop listening to things that are not helping us. The conversation at the shop or in the office, the piece of gossip that we've been told, the negative comments spoken over us. This week, use your ears to hear the good and be reminded of God's love. Thirdly, our eyes. As we put on our helmet of salvation this week, what we see is so important. Scientists believe up to 80% of what we notice comes from our sight. What are you looking at that reminds you of God? Why not choose a story from the Bible you like and perhaps do some artwork based on it? Or go for, out for some exercise and look at the beauty in creation as we move through summer, be amazed again at the Creator God. The helmet that Roman soldiers used had metal guards at the side and over the nose and you only had a clear vision looking forward. Hebrews 12one 2 reminds us to fix our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. This week perhaps we need to adjust our focus, to fix our eyes on Jesus and know the love of his gaze. And finally in our heads we have our mouths. Our mouths have such power. We know the importance of speaking good things there's a well-known saying that what you speak comes out of your heart. Proverbs 18:21 says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. This week, as we put on the helmet of salvation, let's commit to building others up, to using kind words, speaking encouragement. Why not use your mouth this week to pray for yourself, 
for your friends, to thank God for his friendship, to speak positive things over each other. Maybe there are things that as we put on our helmet, we need to stop doing. Words of hurt against each other, swearing, gossip. This week, let's use our mouth to bring hope, love and joy to others. The passage in Ephesians finishes with Paul reminding us that once we have our armour on, we should be praying for the saints. That's for the believers. We don't go into battle alone. I wonder what our week might look like if every day we put on the armour of God. How could our homes and our families be transformed? With the helmet of salvation on, what part could you have this week in enabling our villages and communities to be transformed with the love of God? Amen. The words that you have just heard are from the Sorum Prayer. They are many hundreds of years old and originated at Salisbury Cathedral. And they've been used as a prayer and as a song and as part of liturgy for a very long time. They are beautiful words, aren't they? And a good way uh, and good words on which to base our prayer. So shall we pray? God be in my head and in my understanding. Father, our minds are constantly fed from newspapers, screens and conversations with others. Help us to filter what we read and what we hear to discern what you might be saying to us. Renew our minds and give us wisdom. Help us be more concerned to understand than to be understood. Help us to bring your wisdom to bear in our conversations and dealings with others. Help us as we interpret the times we are living in. We pray for all those involved in leadership in our communities and in governments around the world. Give wisdom and integrity and understanding to all those involved in decision making, especially in those situations which impact on the poor and the weak. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, be in my eyes and in my looking. Father, as we look around us, our senses are assaulted with so many images every day. Thank you for those things we see that bring us joy, like the first flowers of spring or the sunshine in the early morning or the birth of a baby. Help us to look at the world through your eyes. Show us the people and the things we need to see. 
and this week our senses have been assaulted with images of desperate people. We have seen the people of Afghanistan desperate to keep their freedom, women and girls desperate to maintain their education. We have seen people whose homes and livelihoods in Haiti have been devastated by earthquake. We have heard people wondering why. Lord, we pray for mercy for people at their most desperate. We pray for strength for people who are at the end of their resources. We pray for love for those who are left behind in a world where the rich are becoming richer, richer and the poor poorer. Lord, show us the people and situations that need your help and prompt us to help if we can. Let your eyes be our eyes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, be in my mouth and in my speaking. Jesus, thank you that you chose to use us to reach the world with your love. Help us where we speak to speak words that build up and don't tear down. Guide us to think before we speak and consider our words carefully. We pray for all those who've been hurt by something someone has said to them. Those wounds can often be more painful than physical wounds and last far longer. We pray for healing where hurt words have hurt and we ask forgiveness for the times when we've said the wrong thing. Thank you for the words of love you speak to us. Lord, speak those words of love through us to others, that people might know your love in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, be in my heart and in my thinking. Lord, lots of things dominate our thoughts. Many of these things are the worries we have for friends or family. We lift to you now those people and situations that are on our minds. We invite you to intervene in these situations. Help us to trust that you hear our prayers. Lift the burdens we're carrying in our hearts and help us to know that your burden is light. Help us to let go of our anxieties and hand over our lives to your, your control. And in a few moments of silence, shall we pray for those no, known to us in need of prayer today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, be at our end and in our departing. Father, we pray for all those facing the end of their lives this day and in this next few days. And for those who this week have lost a loved one, we pray for carers, for friends and for families for those who are left distraught. We continue to pray for those who lost loved ones in Keam in Plymouth. Lord, may they have strength for each day. And as we go into a new week, let's pray together the prayer from the Sorum Primer. God be in our heads and in our understanding. God be in our eyes and in our looking. God be in our mouths and in our speaking. God be in our hearts and in our thinking. God be at our end and in our departing. And so shall we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you for sharing with us again this morning. It's good to be able to do that. Perhaps we'd like to share in the words of the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Jesus called us to seek first the kingdom of God. Shall we do that now as we sing? <laughs> 